we've been in a series called The Chosen, and we've been uh, following along the TV series called The Chosen. Um, some of you have seen it. Maybe some of you are just joining in with us, whether it be online or in this room, um, and you've maybe seen the TV series, The Chosen, that basically depicts the life of Jesus, but more importantly, even the disciples around him and their character and things like that. Just to make us aware and to revisit this, this everything that you see in the TV show does not happen in the Bible. They're pulling out context and they're expanding on that. So don't take it for God's word. You got to go to God's word for God's word. You can't watch a TV show. It's not a replacement for that. Uh, but what they're doing is, is they're expanding on um, what they do know about the, the, the disciples' character, what they do know about Jesus' character, what they do know about the context and even historically in that day. Um, and they created what's really Really, I think a binge-worthy TV show. Some of you have dived in for the first time. You're like, "Oops, I was supposed to watch one episode a week, and I've already watched the all season one in one week." That's because it's it's amazingly done. Um, so I encourage you to, to watch it. We have a guide for that. You can scan the QR code, like one of our a million QR codes around here, or we have a physical guide. If you're like, "I hate QR codes because I'm tired of seeing them. I see them in my sleep." Thank you, Destiny Church. Um, then you can get a physical guide as well, um, or you can find it on line on the website um, it what it's going to do is each episode you get it's going to give you scripture to dive into and then even questions to reflect on um, to be able to think through the biblical context of it and then coming Sundays we're going to preach around the topics of each episode which we're going to do today and we've seen um, we're in episode four we just watched episode four I'm going to show you some clips of that today um, but in the previous episodes, you saw people like Mary. Mary was demon-possessed, um, and you saw that depicted in episode one, just came, coming straight out of it. It was amazing um, how they depicted that, and um, we talked about that. We talked about um, the Shabbat meal, and we saw that in episode two, and childlike faith, episode three last week. Um, and this week, we're going to be in episode four. And what you see in episode four is really you see... Um, Peter and Andrew, or Simon and Andrew, Simon who would later be called Peter, um, that you see them, the, these two brothers struggling, even through the previous episodes, you see them struggling with the Roman tax, which um, they had to pay, but they couldn't pay it because they didn't have the money at the time, um, and they were struggling with this pressure. You see Peter struggling with marriage issues, and I love how they depict these real-life issues. It really brings it to my human nature, and it helps me understand because oftentimes you can read Scripture, and the way Scripture is read, you can put distance between yourself and the disciples you can put distance say well I'm not like them the days have changed but actually if you really think and dive into the historical context of the day and look at their character and realize that the disciples are just humans like you and me you realize that they some of the same problems that they had some of the same internal issues are just human issues and we deal with them today it may look different with social media and all the technology and the changing world and culture around us but honestly we're still dealing with the same stuff today and you see kind of some of this come to a head in episode four um, but really quickly I want to read to you the key scripture today that I want to pull out of um, so that I can really preach is that okay if I just preach today um, I am going to show you some some clips from the from the series um, and hopefully we can tie it all in together okay so Matthew chapter 4 Matthew chapter 4 verse 18 we see Peter and Andrew pop up in the scripture here, who you'll see depicted in the TV series when we show the clips. Verse 18, it says this, While walking by the Sea of Galilee, he, being Jesus, saw two brothers, Simon, who is called Peter, and Andrew, who is his brother, casting a net into the sea, for they were fishermen. And he said to them, Follow me. Follow me. This word, follow me, is the same word that a Pharisee, a man learned, a teacher of the word, would actually say to his upcoming students as a, as a rite of passage to say, you are my student now. You get to follow me. All Jewish young men who were who, who were ascribing to be um, a religious leader of the day were waiting to hear the words "follow me." That could have been the best words they could have ever heard. 
ones who followed the law, who sat under the teachers, and they were wanting to be a Pharisee, a Sadducee themselves. They were waiting for a teacher to come alongside them and say, follow me. And Jesus here comes to two fishermen, two fishermen. Sure, surely they knew the Torah. Surely they knew the word. Surely they were Jewish, and they followed all, all, all the, religious, uh, the, the religious things that they were meant to follow, but they probably never expected a teacher to come to them and say, follow me. And here Jesus says, follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. Immediately they left their nets. Somebody say immediately. Immediately they, they left their nets and followed him. And going on from there, he saw two brothers, James and John, son of Zebedee. And John, his brother, in the boat with Zebedee, their father, mending their nets. And he called them. Immediately they left their boat and their father and followed him. Father God, today I just pray that you, I thank you that your word is living and active, sharper than any double-edged sword. Speak to us today. Give us fresh perspective today of your word. God, help us pull out what you want us to see, what you want us to hear today, Holy Spirit, um, that we would be transformed because we don't want to come here um, on a Sunday morning just to high-five some people and walk away or just to meet some people and walk away. We want to meet with you, Jesus, and we invite you into the process. Us. We invite, invite you, Holy Spirit, into everything that we're doing, that you would transform us from the inside out. Help us, God, to have the faith like Peter and Andrew. God, help us to see and identify with Peter and Andrew even as humans, God, because we're all in our, our own situations. We all have struggles going on. We all have internal battles going on. We all have imperfections around our life. And Jesus, we need you. We want to hear your voice. And I pray today that somebody would hear the voice of the Lord. Lord, speaking to them, follow me. And they would hear, hear the voice of the Lord speaking to them things that they've uh, longed to hear, maybe from other people, but they would hear your voice today, Jesus, in your name. Amen. Amen. So really quickly, I want us to get a picture, I think, when I, I'm going to show you two clips in just a second. I think you're going to get a picture of Peter and Andrew, Peter who you'll see first, speaking with his wife. Peter and Andrew, you'll get a picture of the human condition, and really, I think you'll be able to identify a little bit with Peter and Andrew. So check out these two clips. Please, please listen to me. I haven't been honest with you. There's no woman, it's not gambling. Look, a few days ago, I looked you in the eyes and I told you, I've got this. I lied. What do you mean? I've been fishing on Shabbat because I've had no choice. Andrew has text debts. I've got text debts. We haven't been able to keep up. I did some things I'm not proud of to fix it, and now it's gone <coughs> bad. And we're in trouble. We? What do you mean? I, I'm in trouble. But we, because I need a miracle, or I can be in big trouble. I'm not a child. Stop speaking of riddles. Tell me what's happening. I could go to prison. We could lose the house. What? Look out in my ear. It's from a Roman. Simon! If I don't catch a ton of fish or get some help somehow, they'll arrest me. Or kill you. They are Romans. Yeah, so I need to go Go now. where? The fish. I gotta spend the rest of the week doing nothing but catch every fish I can and hope I can fix this somehow. So that's why we can't take your Ema. It's just not possible. No, right? she has nothing to do with this. I would not let you punish her for your sins. Eden, you can't do this alone. You can't tell me what I can or can't do. You have had your eyes closed around here, and God is with me, even if you aren't. Sorry. Where is your faith? Hmm? What? You heard me. And faith isn't going to get me more fish. I'm not talking about tonight. I am talking about long before tonight. You've been different. Before it was gambling, and now it's working and trying to do everything yourself. The popular Simon, fixing everything and charming everyone all by yourself. 
and fishing on holy days without even thinking about it, with no respect for our God. What about Pikuach Nefesh? We can break a commandment to save a life. Our lives are at stake here. You don't here. know that because you have not pursued the Lord lately. Not like the man that I met. That is why you are stuck and you feel desperate and now you're off to try to fix it yourself again. So go. I don't want you here tonight anyway. I'm sorry. I know you're sorry. I know. And I'm, I'm glad you're at least honest with me. But no more talking. Maybe God can get your attention now. bark sometimes too. Cast after cast. And I will make your descendants as many as the stars in the heavens. And then what? Huh? Make the chosen as many as the stars. Only to let Egypt enslave us for generations. Bring us out of Egypt. Part the Red Sea. Only to let us wander in the desert for 40 years. Give us the land. Only to let us be exiled in Babylon. Bring us back only to be crushed by Rome. This is the God I've served so faithfully my entire life. You're the God I'm supposed to thank. You know, if I didn't know any better, I'd say you enjoy yanking us around like goats and can't decide whether we're chosen or not. Which one is it? Huh? What? I wonder if anybody's ever felt like this in your relationship with God. Have you ever felt like that? You ever felt like, God, I'm trying everything I can do, and I'm, tr I'm trying my hardest, but I can't seem to fix the problems. Where are you, God? Have you ever felt this way? See, when I was, um, I, I, just, I just think today I want you all to know that you're all f we're all fishing for something. Turn to the person next to you if you're watching online just on your couch or if you have a cat or a dog or something like that and just say, you're fishing. You're fishing. When I was a, when I was a teenager, we owned, I lived, I had the pleasure of living by the water and I owned, uh, I owned, I say I owned, my mom owned and I got the privilege of driving a 17 foot center console Boston Whaler with a 90 horse Evan route on the back who as a teenager and so I thought maybe I'll take up fishing, it's a boat by the way and uh, I own, we owned a boat and I thought I'll take up fishing, I'll go hang out with the friends all the time and you know what, I like shrimp. Yes, if you've ever seen Forrest Gump, 
He's in Alabama, too. He likes shrimp. Bubba likes shrimp. There's all kinds of ways to make shrimp. We know I like shrimp. And so I thought instead of going to the store to buy shrimp, I'm going to go shrimping. Not shrimping, shrimping. And I was going to go shrimping. But in order to go shrimping, you had to get something called a drag net. And you drag it behind the boat. You lift it out as you begin to do something called trolling. And you begin to move slowly as you're throwing the net. And it's got these wings in the net that spread out the net. And you're basically dragging this net behind the boat. And my 17-foot Boston whaler... Uh, it sounds cool, but it wasn't that powerful. It maybe could pull a skier behind the boat. But when you start getting a net out, it starts making the boat do this. And I was riding the boat kind of like this all the way um, through the bays and through the back canals trying to catch shrimp. And I'm thinking, oh, man, I got a good catch. It's pulling. It's dragging. And I'm dragging all this stuff. And I remember stopping the boat and pulling the net in with me and my buddy to realize that we had no shrimp, but we had sticks and mud. Oh, man. And then this net that I just bought with all the money that I had left, I realized there's now holes in the net because of the sticks and the mud. It's pulling and it's yanking on things. I also used to do something if we wanted to catch a fish called a mullet. We used a cast net, and I would stand at the front of the boat like this, and there was a certain way to do it, and you put this nasty net in your teeth, and you, you cast it out like that when you see some, a school of these fish to catch them. But every now and then, if you didn't cast it in the right place, then it would, it would snag on something and it would pull on something. And you're trying to pull your net. And if you're not so lucky, you could pull it, snatch it, and then you, it got cut. And that's why uh, the other two brothers were mending their nets probably because their nets got cut by snagging on something. I want you to know today we're all fishing for something. We're all fishing. Peter, Peter and Andrew were fishing, and Jesus says, you're fishing for something, but now I want you to follow me, and now you're going to fish for men. You're still going to fish, but you're going to fish for men. We're all fishing for something. We all have a net. And I wonder if sometimes maybe you are going through life, and all of a sudden you, your net gets stuck on something. And you feel stuck. I feel stuck in my relationship with God. I feel, I feel stuck in my career. I feel stuck in the place I'm living. I feel stuck in my marriage. I feel stuck at my university. I feel stuck with the degree that I, uh, I chose. I, I feel stuck in the relationships that I'm in. And we go along through life and we begin dragging a net that's really attached to our hearts. And we begin to drag the net and eventually it gets caught on something. We're trying to catch something that we're never meant to catch maybe. Because maybe we're fishing for the wrong thing. Peter and Andrew were fishing even on the Shabbat which to their religion, the Jewish religion, was illegal. They were fishing not just to catch fish but to make money because they were in financial debt because of the Roman tax. They're fishing for the wrong thing. Can, I, can we just be real today? Is it okay? It just just as, as I wrap up the next few moments, because maybe you're out there casting your net fishing for acceptance, and you're casting it to the people online like this, like this. Uh, can they see that? I don't know. <laughs> and, you're, and, and you're trying to, and you're trying to, Look for acceptance everywhere you go. You're saying, I hope they love me. I hope they, I hope they accept me. And you're dragging your net through life looking for love. Maybe you wouldn't say it that way, I'm out there looking for love, but every relationship you get yourself into, you end up hurt because really what you're looking for is love, and it's a self-centered relationship because it's all about what they can give me, and you're dragging your net. And you wonder why, when you pull your, your, your life up, when the relationship ends, it's full of holes, 
because you're dragging your net in the wrong place. Are you with me? Dragging your net looking for fulfillment. You're going through life, and you, and you bring your net. Maybe it, looks like, maybe it looks like this. And you bring your net with you to work. And you're looking in your career for fulfillment. And you're looking in your promotion. I just want my life to mean something. I want, I want my life to count for something. And you're, you're fishing for perfection. You're looking for a perfect life. You're looking for a perfect place to live. You're looking for a perfect relationship. You're looking for the perfect job. You're looking for the perfect bank account. You're, look, you're looking for the perfect kids. You're looking for the perfect family. You're looking for the perfect scenario in life. And can I tell you, if you're looking and fishing for perfection, you're never going to find it. Because there's nothing perfect in this world except for the one who calls you to fish for men. And we drag our net around. We're looking and fishing for comfort. I just want a, I just want a comfortable life. I don't need to be rich, <laughs> you know. I don't need to. I don't need to have all the money. I don't need to have a. I don't need to have a Ferrari. I don't need to have a two-car garage. I don't need to have that. I don't need to have all that. I just. I just want to be comfortable. And we go fishing. And one, and one day what you used to think was comfortable isn't comfortable anymore, so you always fish for comfortable. Are you with me? Oh, I want to be great, and we fish for greatness. We fish for greatness. The problem, the problem with nets are nets are how people get hurt. Nets are how people get hurt in church. Can we talk church? Because maybe I'm just speaking to somebody who's been hurt in church before. Nets are how people get hurt in church because we bring our nets to church. And then your net and need for love, your need to be needed, gets tangled up in somebody else's net of pride because they're searching for greatness. And they didn't realize they hurt you and rejected you, but because all you're looking for is love and acceptance, all you received was rejection. And so I don't like that church. So-and-so, they hurt me. Or you start saying, well, we need to pray for her because that's how church people gossip. This is how, this is how people get hurt in church because we drag our nets looking for the wrong thing. I need, I need this, and I need that. Can I just be real? Because I've, I've done it too. I just, I just need to be accepted. You know, it's easy to come up here. It's easy to come up here on a, on a Sunday morning and do this while I preach. I hope they say amen because they're really quiet today. I hope this is really hitting home. I hope I didn't prepare for 20 hours this week. I'm just kidding. I don't take 20 hours. Come on, somebody. I hope that I, hope that I preached a good message, but I need to remind myself that it's not about how you feel or about a clap or about an amen because I'm just being obedient to what God told me to do, but I'm just trying to identify with you that it could be easy to come up here and fish. Just like it's easy for you to come to church and fish for the wrong things. Listen, Megan and I as pastors, we're going to do our best to say hi to everybody and we're going to do our best to remember your names, but we're just not that great, okay? We're not superstars. So if we don't say hi to you on a Sunday, please stop fishing. I'm so sorry. My, I'm going to try my best. It's not because I don't love you. I really love you. Hi, church online. Hi, everybody watching. We love you. You did Nets are how people get hung up on a fence. Huh? Somebody offends you and you can't move forward because the net's hung up on the branch called a fence and you're offended. Oh, I'm offended at what they did to me. I'm offended. It's not about what they said, it's about how they said it. I'm offended. And you're hung up on that one offense because what you're fishing for is something that you're not meant to be fishing for. Nets are how people get rejected. Nets are how people get lost and broken because you drag your net through life looking for all the wrong things and you end up with a shattered net. You end up with a shattered existence. 
But the good thing is, listen to me, this isn't in the notes, this isn't going to be on the screen, but God says that he's close to the brokenhearted. So maybe you've been hurt, maybe you've been hurt in church, maybe you've been dragging your net through your entire life, and you pull your net up and you say, how can he use this to fish? I don't know. How can he use me to fish for men? Look at my life. It's broken because of that rejection and that pain and that offense. I can't even get my net unstuck. But that's why he says, I'm close to the brokenhearted. And that's why he says, I'm not here just to mend you. I'm here to raise you to a new life. And you're not fishing for for things anymore. You're fishing for men because I've called you to a higher purpose and a higher calling. You're not fishing for acceptance anymore. You're not fishing for finances anymore. You're not fishing for greatness. You're not fishing for success. You're fishing for men because I've called you. I've destined you before you were ever born. I know who I knew you in your mother's womb before your mom knew your name, before your dad knew your name. I've called you. I've chosen you. Follow me. I'll make you a fisher of men. We got to stop. Maybe let me say it this way. We've got to stop fishing with our flesh. We've got to stop fishing with our flesh. When I say our flesh, I mean your your emotions. I mean your natural desires. Because if I'm fishing with my flesh, I'm fishing with my lust. I'm fishing with my self-centeredness. I'm fishing with my self-indulgence. I'm fishing with my the part of me that just wants more and that only cares about me. If that's what I'm fishing for and fishing with. And that's what Jesus is saying here is, listen, I see you're a fisherman. I see you're a fisherman. And I bet you can tell me how to tie 200 different types of knots, fisherman. And I bet you know every, I bet you know all the holes here where all the fish live. I bet you know everything there is to know about fishing. But listen to me, I'm not calling you anymore to something physical. I'm calling you to something spiritual. I'm calling you to fish for men. And, and it's going to require you to drop your nets. We've got to stop fishing with our fl- flesh. Let's watch this last clip. Simon, it's him. Excuse me. That's him, Simon, that's him. No time for this, Andrew. It's him, Simon, it's the man. John said he's here, right now. May I ask a favor? I'm teaching these people and apparently they're having trouble hearing me. If I could stand on your boat, that would be helpful. They're having trouble hearing you, huh? Yes, yes, of course. Please, please, stand on our boat. Thank you. I need to go, I'm sorry. No time for this today. Stay a few moments longer. I have something for you. For me? I'm in a hurry. Yes, I know. Just allow me a few moments, please. Sarah, trust me as I have trusted you. This man is the Messiah. It's good to see you again, Andrew. Yes. I'm Jesus. Thanks for this. Simon. In my last moments with you, I want to share another story. Can everyone hear me? Yes. Well, let's thank our friends for this strong boat, huh? Thank you. Trust me, my yelling voice is not easy on the ears. Because I'm on this boat, my final parable should be about fishing, yes? Simon, please send me that net. When this net is thrown into the sea, what happens, Simon? Well, I mean most of the time. It gathers. A a little louder. It gathers fish. Yes. This net gathers fish, all kinds of fish, yes? Yes. All kinds of fish. And the kingdom of heaven is like what happens next. After the net is full, 
Simon and the others draw it to the shore. Sit down and sort out the fish. The good fish go into the barrels, and the bad fish thrown away. So it will be at the end of the age. Angels will come and separate the evil from the righteous and throw them into a fiery furnace. Do you understand? Therefore, every scribe who has been trained for the kingdom of heaven, like you all are now, is like the master of a house who brings forth his treasures, both new and old. You are to do the same with this knowledge. These parables I tell make sense to some, not to others. Be patient. That is all for today. I have some business to attend to with my new friend. Put that down for a catch. A little farther out. Uh, I don't have a quarrel with you, teacher. But we've been doing this all night. Nothing. All right. At your word. brother and the baptizer. <laughs> you are the Lamb of God, yes? I am. Depart from me. I am a sinful man. You don't know who I am and the things I've done. Don't be afraid, Simon. I'm sorry. 
We, we've waited for you for so long. We believe. But my faith, how sorry. Lift up your head, fisherman. <laughs> what do you want from me? Anything you ask, I will do. Follow me. Follow me. The Bible says in Matthew 4 that they drop their nets immediately. Say it with me one more time. Immediately. Immediately. They drop their nets. Immediately they drop their nets. Let me just leave you with this today. A few different points that I think you can grab a hold of. I, we, we, have, we, we spend our life, I believe, uh, dragging a net, fishing for the wrong things. Until we make a decision to intentionally follow him and stop fishing for the wrong things and fish for what he's called us to fish for. Spend our life on purpose. Spend our life in his purpose. So let me just, let me just encourage us as a church today that we need to drop our nets. To drop our nets. What does that mean? Well, number one, when you drop your net, you're dropping your need to be in control. You're dropping your need to be in control. Saying, I don't need to be in control anymore. I've been trying to fix my life. I've been trying to solve the problem my way. I've been awake at night, not being able to sleep because I'm trying to control what seems to be out of control. I'm dropping my need to be in control. I don't need to be in control of my career. I don't need to be in control of where I live. I don't need to be in control of my circumstances around me. I'm not in control of my family. Do you know that God, for those of you who are married and for those of you who have a family um, are around you, well, let's just even bring it this way. For all of us who have a family, whether you have a relationship or don't have a relationship with them, God never called you to control them. Parents, God hasn't called you to control your kids. He's called you to steward them. He hasn't called you to control your spouse. He's called you to love them. I'm not in control. I've got to drop my need for control. When you drop your net, you're dropping your self-indulgence. I'm dropping my self-indulgence to do things, everything that I want to do, to, 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 to be the, like I'm the magnet and everything has to come to me and everything has to fill me up and every relationship has to be about me and every conversation has to be about me and every uh, everything has to be my pursuit of me being happy. I'm dropping my self-indulgence. I'm dropping my my net. I'm, I'm dropping my, this is going to be for somebody today. I'm dropping my need to be right. I'm dropping my need to be right. I, I don't have to be right. I don't have to be right. Because my rightness, as the Bible would say, listen to this, somebody who's struggling with the need to be right. My rightness or righteousness is filthy rags to him. The only rightness that I need to have is his rightness or his righteousness. I'm dropping my need to be right. I'm dropping my offense. I'm dropping my offense. You're hung up on an offense. You're hung up on what they did to you. You're hung up on what they said to you. I'm leaving the net there. I'm leaving the net there. It can, it, it can be under the water. That's history. I'm moving on. I'm dropping my offense. I'm dropping 
When you drop your nets, you're dropping your plans. Peter and Andrew were fishermen. It's how they made a living. They took it over from their father. It had been in the family. It's what they were meant to do. But immediately they dropped everything that they knew and followed Jesus because the call was greater than the circumstance. The call was greater than where they were at in that moment. I'm dropping my plans because we all got plans. I'm dropping my plans. And can I just tell you one last thing when you drop your net is you're dropping all the stuff that you pick up along the way that you were never meant to carry. Somebody today needs to hear that you weren't meant to carry that thing. You weren't meant to carry that burden. You weren't meant to carry that weight. You weren't meant to carry that responsibility. The only thing Jesus asks you to carry is the cross. And he says his burden and his yoke is easy and light. And what we tend to do is we try to pick up the burdens of somebody else. We try to pick up our own burdens and our own things and our own pains and the stuff that happened to us years ago. And I'm telling you today that when he calls you out, he's asking you and to drop the net, drop the things that you've picked up from the past that are weighing you down, that are not meant to be there. Can you stand to your feet today? We're going to drop the nets, amen? We're going to drop our nets and follow him. Maybe today, just, to, just as a sign to say, I'm, maybe you identify with some of these things. I'm dropping my need to be in control. I'm, I'm dropping self-indulgence. I'm dropping my need to be right. I'm dropping my, an offense. I'm dropping the things I picked up along the way, or I'm dropping my plans. Maybe just as a symbol, online and in the room, just to say, I'm dropping my nets. Maybe you just want to lift your hands like this today. Because you're saying, I want to receive what you have for me. Maybe you just even picture Jesus placing his purpose in your hands, his net in your hands, his talents, his gifting in your hands. And you're releasing the net that you've been dragging through life that has picked up old habits, that has picked up old pains, that has hung on to some kind of an offense that's picked up um, the wrong relationships or the need to be right or the need for love and the need for acceptance and I'm dropping those things today Jesus and I'm picking up the plans and the purposes you have for me God I'm, 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 I'm letting go of all those things and dropping my nets and I will follow you today maybe today in the room or online there's somebody who wants to say I want to follow Jesus and maybe this is the first time you've ever made that decision. Maybe you've never made a decision to follow him before. Maybe you can identify with Peter and you've been going your whole life, maybe wrapped up in religion, trying to do it your own way. And today you want to turn from doing it your own way and go his way and take his burden and yoke upon your life and take up his calling and purpose on your life and give your life to him. Maybe you want to Maybe you've walked away from him and you want to come back to him today. I'm going to pray for you, but if that's you in the room or online, I just want you to lift a hand and say that's me. I want to make that decision for the first time today or I'm coming back to him today. I'm, I I'm deciding again afresh to come back to him maybe. Father, today I thank you for every hand raised. I thank you, Lord God, that, you, that we, we make a fresh commitment to come back to you. Can everybody just pray this with me? Say, Jesus. I come back to you. I am yours. I'm dropping my net. I'm dropping my plans. I'm dropping my will. And I'm picking up your life. I'm taking the cross upon my life. The cross that you died on for me. So that I could live. You are the Lord of my life. And I surrender to you today, Jesus. I surrender to you, Jesus. Amen and amen. God, we worship you today. We're dropping the nets. Come on, church, let's worship today one last time as we close.